What if a Pokemon game released these days that had a type with no weaknesses, their main offensive stat doubled as a defensive stat, and the only thing that resisted it was a mirror match against the same type? Well ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Generation 1 Psychic Types, where due to a coding bug, ghost types can't affect them, and bug types were so underdeveloped and pathetic that they may as well not exist. Combine this with how grossly overpowered special is as a stat, since it's unified for both offensive and defensive purposes, and you have the recipe for some really oppressive Pokemon. Throughout the course of a regular playthrough, you'll see some here and there, but one specific Pokemon always sticks out, and that is the raid boss of several of my solo runs, Alakazam. This rude dude is inevitable. You'll see this mustached spoon cat man about four times during the last ten mandatory battles of the game, and each time he gets stronger and stronger. Either have a way to deal with it, or just be prepared to have a frustrating time. Alakazam is the culmination of nearly everything that makes Generation 1 broken, and as a standalone Pokemon, it's easily among the elite outside of a certain genetically cloned legendary that we're not going to speak of yet. I mean, just look at the stats. I've talked about solo runs and the stats that matter, and look at the two that just jump off the page here. 120 speed is tied for fourth in the game, and that will give you a crazy 23.4 crit rate. Combine that with this monstrous special stat of 135, and you have the recipe to just blow up anything in the game. Taking a look at my personal tier list, the last two weeks have really set a high bar. Machamp surprised me with its 2 hour and 52 minute time, but then Starmie came along and clutched it out a week later, taking the championship away from our favorite forearm choppy dude due to how excellent its move coverage was late in the game. But Alakazam should be able to easily beat Starmie, right? It has better stats, it has better starting moves, so we should just go ahead and pencil in Alakazam at the top, but not so fast my friends. There is a lone caveat, Alakazam may be the strongest type in the game with almost the high special and speed, but it's not without its imperfections. While it does start off with confusion to give it a stab psychic move with a respectable base power and enough PP to keep it from having to heal very often, look at its learn set. It doesn't learn any coverage moves and the few that it does are physical which means that Alakazam cannot utilize that big beefy special and is stuck relying solely on psychic during the tough battles of the game. So now that that's set up, how do you think Alakazam will do? The bar is set really high and only the elite boys can compete in this new tier list. Will there be a change at the top for the third week in a row, or is Starmie the peak Generation 1 Pokemon? Let's get into it. As usual, I reset at the start to get some decent DVs for the run, and I chose Charmander for my rival because we barely get to see this very popular fire flying boy in any of my runs, and with confusion, there's no need for any extra battles, I head to Brock as soon as possible, and it's not the cleanest fight because Alakazam has frail defensive stats, but Confusion does enough heavy damage to quickly move past this fight, and really quick, this is something I normally don't show after Brock, but I always quickly dip into this Pokemart, I buy 6 Pokeballs, I buy some potions, a couple of antidotes, and a couple of paralyzed heals. I put this in because maybe one day a professional might watch this and tell me I'm doing something wrong, and from this point, Confusion provides great damage and a sufficient 25 PP to keep us away from Poke Centers, which is the easiest way to save time. And inside Mount Moon, I take the slightest deviation from the straight line, and I pick up Mega Punch. This move isn't great, but its role here is to supplement Confusion to save us some PP and keep us away from healing. It's possible that this might be a slight waste of time, but in reality it was only like 20 seconds of in-game time, but we'll see how it works out. Let's move on, we pick up at rival number 2. I haven't healed in the game yet, and I'm down to 2 PP left on Confusion, and I'm not using any potions. It does take a few times to get past this battle and get everything going right, but with Mega Punch and my last 2 Confusions, I'm able to barely survive and squeak past this battle before going to heal for the first time. Nugget Bridge on the route to Bill's house is pretty standard, but I do one extra battle at this hiker so that I can get an extra elixir. The idea that this will stretch out the required Poke Center visits and be a time saver over my previous runs. I pick up Dig, and I battle Misty before healing again, 
and this battle is a one shot. It's not too bad, the Staryu is a non-issue, and this is a rare Misty situation where you would rather have her use her water moves since we have such good special. I do get low, but eventually I get a dig crit and we get past this one. Now it's time for the SSN, and I don't get body slam. Mega Punch is barely needed as it is, and it's just wasted time with Alakazam's attack stat. I do, however, venture into the room with the gentleman, and I pick up the rare candy. Next up is rival number three, and this one is even easier than rival number two. We have confusion to quickly take down Pidgeotto and Raticate, and Dig gives us a way to take out Kadabra in just one hit. I also use Dig on Charmeleon, just so I can save some PP for later. At this point, it's worth noting a huge difference in Alakazam and some of the elite level Pokemon, and that is the fact that Alakazam is not in the slow leveling group, so unlike Starmie for example, I'm gaining levels at a decent rate, and I'm not feeling under leveled. I also learned Psybeam at level 27, and this gives us 45 PP of same type attacks to use our special stat to utilize before healing. Afterwards we pick up Cut, and we head to Surge, and there's no way around it. Alakazam is pretty fun to play with. Notice my health on some of these battles, I rarely have to heal, and I quickly nuke down the opposition. This one is over very quick, and I reiterate that it's a damn shame that we can't learn Thunderbolt. And here's the junior trainer that was the hardest obstacle in the entire Starmie run. Revenge is sweet, and dropping a psychic atomic bomb on these Oddish and Bell Sprouts just feels good. Rock Tunnel is uneventful, I skip Rabble number 4 and Lavender this time, and I heal in Celadon to give myself a strategic dig location more than anything else, and I head immediately to the Rocket Hideout, and here's where you fight Giovanni number 1, and you might think that it would be better to make a beeline straight to Psychic, and I'll get into why it's a time loss in a bit, but Psybeam is sufficient enough to get past the first two Pokemon, the Kangaskhan does survive one, but a confusion just cleans it up, and Psychic would have saved a single turn here, but overall it's an easy fight, as expected. After that, it's immediately time to face Erika, and even without Psychic, this one isn't bad. Psybeam unfortunately does not one-hit the Victory Bell, but a retroactive Super Potion means that it doesn't cause any problems, Tangela also takes two hits to go down, and Vileplume goes down in one. If you are keeping track, that's three total turns that Psychic could have saved us to this point. Now it's time for Pokemon Tower and rival number 4. Psybeam is good enough to take down Pidgeotto in one hit, but Execute takes two to go down. It's the first Pokemon so far that resists Alakazam in the game, and I think that not even Psychic would be able to one hit it. Gyarados also takes two hits, but I think that Psychic might have been able to get this one done in one. I utilize Dig once again on both Kadabra and Charmeleon for another one shot battle, and the Psychic time saving tally is up to four turns. The rest of the tower is almost all weak to Psychic, and I pick up the Pokey Flute from Mr. Fuji and head down to Fuchsia City. And this is the part of the game where you have to visit the Poke Center so that you can deposit some key items or you will run out of inventory space and run into some problems. And I just personally feel like this is the best time as you've gotten most of the key items in the game and you can dump a rather large amount of storage so that you can just be done with it for the rest of the run. With Fuchsia unlocked as a flyable location, I go ahead and I go to the Safari Zone, I pick up the teeth, and I pick up Surf. And from this point, I call an audible. I was thinking that this might be a risky play during the run, but I think it was critical to getting Alakazam the best time that it can get. I dig from Safari Zone, back to Celadon, then I visit the Pokemon, I grab the water from the guards, but I also get one of each so that I can trade to the little girl for all the TMs just to sell anything for that sweet cash money. I sell everything I possibly can, and with all of my money I'm able to just go ahead and pick up the TM for Reflect, and more pivotal are the 6 Calciums that I can get. These extra points of special might seem minuscule, but trust me, they do make a big difference coming up. And after that brief detour, it's time for Koga. Well, almost. But it's worth mentioning the trainers that lead up to him. This is one of the first times we run into some other psychic types, and the footage is going to play in the background so you can just see how slow it can be against some of these drowsies, it's not a problem, it's just a little slow. The important thing here is it's time to reveal why I never detoured to get Psychic, and that's because Alakazam just learns it at level 38. And I go ahead and I get it right before Koga, I immediately use the 3 PP ups I get in the game to get it up to 16 power points, and this is where I think I saved a good bit of time by not wasting the time of getting the fresh water, going past the guards, cycling to Mr. Psychic's house and then getting Psychic, but rather just progressing regularly through the game at the cost of a mere four turns 
definitely shaved off a few minutes of time in my book. So this brings us to Koga, and there's not much to say here. Psychic sends every one of his Pokemon into the Shadow Realm, and just like with Starmie, another murder has been committed. I'm a wanted man, Koga's dead. And now it's time for Sylph Company. I pick up the rare candy on floor 10 that's locked behind a battle, and then I head to rival number 5. And let's see how what is usually one of the key fights in the game goes. First up is Pidgeot, it survives a Psychic. I take a wing attack critical hit in response, and I finish it off with a Psybeam. Execute is up next, and it's in that elusive group of Pokemon that resist Alakazam. Psychic does not take it out, as expected, but it does do half health, and I get extremely lucky that it misses a Stun Spore here. That probably would have resulted in a reset, but I'll take it. The next Psychic moves us on to the next Pokemon, which is Gyarados. And that one takes two Psychics as well, because apparently my crit rate is actually 1% as opposed to 23% this match. I do take a bite before I take it out. Now it's time for the Mirror Match. I'm at half health, I use Recover. I haven't had a chance to talk about Recover, but it's a very strong move and it allows Alakazam to be very resilient, much more resilient than you would think. And the opposing Alakazam does hit a confusion, and what do you know, it gets the very small chance to confuse us because of course it does. And then I go on to hit myself two more times, and then I use another Recover. At that point, I start using Dig, it does good damage, but Alakazam uses Recover between the second Dig, but luckily I finally get a crit, and we get past the Mirror Match, and there's three more of these Alakazam Mirror Matches to go, it's gonna be fun. Last up is Charizard, it does get off a Slash, which automatically crits for heavy damage, but I'm healthy enough to survive, and two Psychics get us past this one in one try. Immediately after is Giovanni number two, and there's not much to say for this one, Psychic just slices through his entire team for a really easy battle. It's worth noting that in the grunt battle before this, I had the opportunity to learn Reflect via level up, but I do not learn it now because it's a cheap TM and I could just learn it later when I need it. I still need Psy Beam for the moment. And now that that's finished, it's time to surf down from Pallet Town and then after some Tombstoner brother. It's time for Blaine, and this one is a fairly easy fight. There's no strategy to speak of here. It's a Psychic Fest. Rapidash can survive one, as does the Arcanine, but there's not enough Super Potions in the world to stop me from winning this one. And that's six badges down, and now it's time for Sabrina. And this is where those extra Calciums and resetting for decent DVs come into play. The Kadabra and Mr. Mime resist my attacks, but Psychic does well enough to take them out fairly quickly without much issue. And then here's Venomoth, it's just randomly here on our team for some unexplained reason, and it's weak to Psychic, so you know how this one's gonna go. The real issue here is Alakazam, and it's not because it's some tough, sweaty battle that tests all of our strategy and tactics, but rather because Sabrina's AI will only use Recover over and over and over and over. And I try again and again to get it down, but eventually I get a dig crit, but it barely survives. So it uses a Hyper Potion to get back up to full health. Then I miraculously get a second dig critical hit, but once again it's not enough, and it continues to use Recover. This goes on for some time, and since in Generation 1 opponents don't have power points, uh, this, this will just last forever, and I'm forced to reset. Now, if you're here watching my videos, I'm sure that most people have seen the J-Rose video on Alakazam. He went with a toxic strategy, and that's all fine and good, but it's not needed. In the same way that minimum battles can also give you an overall worse time, I believe that the toxic strategy will also give you a worse time. You have the tools to get past this fight as it is, and let's see how it goes next time. So the strategy should be simple in theory. I spam Psychic until I get at least one special drop. It has a 33% chance. Hopefully I'll get more. And at that point, I use Dig until I get a crit. And then with the special drop from the previous Psychics, I should do enough damage to take it out at that point. It's simple, right? Well, wouldn't you believe that all 10 PP of my Dig was used and I didn't get a single crit, not one. Guys, Alakazam has a near one out of four chance to crit and that means statistically, if you use 10 moves, you'll get anywhere from two to three crits during most stretches of the time. I didn't get a single one. I have an actual 0% chance to crit. So what happens from there? Well, honestly, I get lucky. I got lucky with the special drops from the first part of my plan, and then I just spam Psychic, and I don't get a single hit for the rest of the battle, but that's a good thing. Since in Generation 1, crits ignore stat changes, and we want that special drop to be calculated in with the damage, so with the special drops, it does just a little bit more than Recover does, and I slowly outpace it to take the win, 
It's not too bad, and even though we got abysmal luck on Dig, Toxic was not needed at all, and I think that this is the hardest fight in the game by far, but that's due to the rudimentary AI of Generation 1 rather than any actual challenge. But there are two more Alakazams left, but we'll talk about that problem later. Moving on, it's time for Giovanni and the Last Gem, and it's just a formality at this point. I have to utilize Psybeam a little bit since it's been a while since I healed, but it's still laughable when it's a one-shot battle. Now let's talk about the real battles of the game. Before the Elite Four, first up is rival number six. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. Pidgeot is a two-shot, and Rhyhorn goes down in one hit. Now on to the Execute, which resists Psychic. It's about the same as the last rival fight, it still does about half damage. It soaks in some sunlight for a solar beam, which gives me a free turn just to knock it out. No issues. Gyarados also takes two shots, but it's interesting how little Hydro Pump does with our good special. This move, Gyarados Hydro Pump has ended so many runs for us, and it's nice to see it do a little bit of damage only. Either way, it goes down on the next turn, and it's time for another mirror match. And I'm prepared just to roll my eyes all the way in the back of my head, prepare for a 45 minute battle. But the AI is not the same as Sabrina, at least I don't think so. It can't be. It spams Reflect in this case, and Reflect is actually a psychic move. It has access to Recover, but it never bothers to use it. I'm not sure if this was bad luck or something like that, but either way it wasn't bad at all. It just takes a few psychics to go down, and it wasn't a drawn out battle by any means. Charizard is up last, and Psychic doesn't one hit it. It goes for Flamethrower, which is perfectly fine because we got that big boy special, and then we take the battle. Moving on, I don't do anything extra in Victory Road. I do grab the optional rare candy, but I fight zero trainers. The last thing that I'll say before venturing into the Elite Four is that it's actually a time save to go ahead and deposit your Pokemon in the PC before you do these, because it's actually slower to watch the HM Pokemon go by in the Hall of Fame ending sequence. But with that said, now it's time for the Elite Four. Let's not keep anyone in suspense. I use every single one of my rare candies before heading into Lorelei since we don't have any badge boost. And overall, this fight isn't too bad. I love J-Rose, guys, but I have to use Hindsight in my humble video. But he refused to use rare candies, and he was still attempting to use toxic strats in these battles. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it almost looks like he sabotaged his run so that he would intentionally be slower than Mewtwo, but that's probably just my tinfoil hat speaking. If you use the rare candies, this fight isn't an issue in the least. Oddly enough, just like with Starmie, Jinx is the one bump in the road, it resists Alakazam and does take several hits to go down. It does decent damage to me, but in most of these runs, Jinx doesn't really get a second look. But in this case, it was the strongest member of her team. Lapras is last up, and although I'm pretty low, I still have Recover. But I'm feeling a little risky, guys, on this day, and I just go for Psychic. Lapras does hit a Blizzard, and even at low health, I still manage to hang on with that beautiful special stat, and we take the battle. We're moving on. Next up is Bruno, and we can just knock off some time out of the video here. Fighting types against Psychic, and then some random rocks uh, with low special. We all know the results of this one. We're moving on. Third on the list is Agatha, and I'm not joking when I say that this one is actually easier than Bruno. At least Bruno has two Onyx that aren't weak to Psychic. In this battle, every single one of her Pokemon are both outsped and one-shot by Psychic, and there's nothing to note or any real strategy to speak of in this one, and that feels pretty good. Now it's time to look at Lance, and for this one, I have to teach Reflect over Psybeam. It's key for these last two battles, because High Special and Psychic alone isn't enough just to brute force my way through. I have no doubt that a Gyarados or a Dragonite Hyper Beam would absolutely wreck Alakazam, and a move that halves the damage of physical moves is just what the doctor ordered for these fights. Turn 1, I set up Reflect to give me protection for the rest of the fight. Gyarados goes for a Dragon Rage, so we don't really see the result since it does a flat 40 HP. Psychic doesn't KO, I take a Hydro Pump which is fine, but we are down to about half health. One more Psychic and we are moving on. On the first Dragonair, I use Recover to go back to full health. I take another Dragon Rage, and a Psychic is a one-hit knockout, and then the second Dragonair comes in, the same goes for it, one Psychic, and it's down. Aerodactyl is next, a Psychic just misses taking it out, but I'm not too worried about it, unless it crits, but it doesn't. It uses Bite, and with my Reflect damage, it's no problem at all, and Dragonite's last, and it's a little bit scary, so I do use Recover to go back to full health. I take a Slam for just a little bit of damage, it comfortably tanks the Psychic, 
and then it goes for a hyper beam. And here's a perfect example of how much reflect helps in the fight. I deal the final blow next turn, and we are just cruising along in this elite four. But things can't be that easy, right? It's been really smooth to this point, and let's see what the champion has to offer. First up is Pidgeot, setting up reflect is probably the correct play to do here, but I don't do that. I go pure offense here, psychics all the way. I want to see if maybe I can get a lucky crit and just move on, but I don't. It uses mirror move, it uses psychic back on me, it doesn't do a whole lot, and then I take it out of the next turn. Alakazam is up next for the fourth mirror match in the run, and this one is even further proof that the rival's AI isn't like Sabrina's at all. I utilize Dig in this specific case. The first one takes it to about half health, then it uses side beam. I dig underground, it goes for psychic, it misses obviously, and then I knock it out on my second turn. Again, not bad at all, and it's definitely not like Sabrina's awful slog. Next up is Rhydon, and this is the point where you have to set up Reflect for insurance purposes. I take a pathetic Fury attack, and I follow it up with a one-hit Psychic. Now one of the most annoying Pokemon in the game is up next, but thank god its AI will not let it use Hypnosis, and it just goes for its normal moves that Reflect halves. It takes several Psychics to go down, I get chipped a little bit each turn, but I have to use Recover, but eventually I spam Psychic and this annoying part of the battle is over. Next up is Gyarados, who has been pretty quiet in this run. It usually causes a lot of ruckus, but a Psychic does take it down to about half health, and it uses a Leer. Thank you for the badge boost, buddy. I really appreciate it. I knock it out on the next turn. Last up is Charizard, and a Slash could be deadly. It survives a Psychic, but instead it just goes for a Fire Spin and it misses and a second Psychic takes it out, that's a victory, the run's over. And I'm pleased to announce to everyone that this is the first ever one shot of the Elite Four on camera, and it was really easy. And again, I hate hearkening back to J-Rose, cause I got nothing but love for him, he's the person who got me into these kind of runs, but it just confuses me that the whole toxic strategy carrying over into the Elite Four, and then he left the Indigo Plateau to go get Reflect, and it just feels like he didn't give Alakazam a fair shake at the time, but he also does stuff like redo runs for Charmander, for example, but I digress, that's neither here nor there, two different people, two different videos, I get a couple of hundred views, he gets a couple of hundred thousand, so what do I know? Anyways, how did Alakazam do? Two hours, 50 minutes is the time to beat, and the answer is yes! Alakazam clocks in with a very impressive 2 hours, 44 minutes of in-game time. It was higher level than Starmie, but that's basically just because it's not in that awful slow leveling group. But overall, I'm impressed. There wasn't a single point in the game that I had to really retry more than a time or two, and the hardest battle was going against a rudimentary AI on Sabrina's Alakazam. This is impressive as well because Alakazam has no coverage moves, and I had to use Dig even in the very last battle to save some time, even though it has a very poor attack stat. Although, I do think Psychic might have been able to knock it out in 4 turns if I'm being honest. And Alakazam's on top of the hill, at least for now. There are a couple of moments in the game where I actually think I could have saved a few minutes, but 6 minutes off of Starmie's time is pretty impressive, and I highly doubt there's many, if any, Pokemon that can actually beat this time. Two come to my mind, but we'll save that for another video. Let's let Alakazam just celebrate his great run. Anyways, that's about it for me. I try to do a challenge every week, and if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you, and consider subscribing and hitting that bell to catch any new videos. Any comments are appreciated because I don't know why it's so hard for to get you guys to interact with me, and oftentimes it just makes me feel like I'm talking to myself, doing my hobby. But that's all I got. That's all I have for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.